Hello and welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be discussing the failure of Compaq. Starting as a highly successful and legal IBM PC clone, Compaq did find its time of life during the 1980s and 90s. Not only that, Compaq was also one of the first successful startups in the PC and laptop market during its time. In today's time, Compaq is nowhere to be found and has eventually been acquired by HP. So, what caused the decline of this amazing brand? In today's video, we are going to be finding out all the possible reasons as to why Compaq had failed. So stay tuned till the end. Welcome to Schematic World. This is Shantan Mukherjee helping you how to grow yourself today. If this is your first time on my channel and you want to learn how to develop entrepreneurial abilities, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking on the bell notifications so that you never miss an update. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. The ill-fated DEC merger Distraction was a major factor when it came to the decline of this major organization which was dominating the PC industry for almost 15 years. 2001 was the year when Compaq started seeing its downfall at an alarming rate. This downfall started when Compaq decided to merge with Digital Equipment Corporation or DEC. During those days, IBM was having a tough time alongside Compaq and the latter thought that it would be a wonderful idea if it could keep up this difference at a much larger pace by entering into the services market. DEC and its highly successful service works did seem to be a great match for a merger, at least on paper that is. There was a huge load of things Compaq did not even consider acquiring from DEC. DEC had a market where it was heavily reliant on Intel to run its business. Compaq did not want to make chips for itself and was also reliant on Intel or AMD to supply the chips. This did not help during the merger as the chips made by DEC was not compatible with Intel's x86. DEC also had a huge production of microcomputers and Compaq thought that that was of no use, thus paid no heed to the same. A similar situation was encountered by Compaq when they got to know that DEC was also responsible for manufacturing Unix system of the size of a refrigerator. Compaq compelled people to buy systems running on Windows NT instead of Unix. This changed the entire direction for Compaq. It was the December of 1998 when Compaq decided to check out a sum of $9.6 billion in order to acquire DEC. This acquisition resulted in Compaq jumping from the 42nd spot to the 22nd spot on the Fortune 500 list. Trouble in Paradise Compaq had already made it clear that they do not want certain business portions from DEC and soon enough in 1997, Intel made the first move in buying all the remaining chip-making businesses. DEC also decided to sell its printer business to Genicom in the same year. Compaq then sold the AltaVista search engine for $2.3 billion. Compaq failed in keeping up with the right direction in which the business would go. DEC was already falling apart on its own, merging with Compaq made it no better. Compaq had no idea what they had already lost when Intel had decided to take over the chip making business and give work to clients such as Dell. 
many companies started to flee away from the idea of DEC making parts for them due to a series of conflicts in the company on an internal basis. By not disclosing infrequencies by Earl Mason, CEO then, he was soon fired off from the board for Eckhart Peffier to take over. Where companies such as Dell, Gateway, HP and even almost failing IBM had started to increase their sales, Compaq was struggling by the end of 1999. Compaq was definitely hiding something and this became more certain when they did not make use of the Y2K issue which was being used by virtually every company back then. Compaq was clearly not ready for the direct order business. When it did start the direct sales, it was saddening to see the same get crushed by Dell who was almost leading the industry back in 2001. The dot com bust The rapid increase of the internet startups during the dot com bubble was a huge strike for Compaq. The newly formed startups started to focus all its attention towards the successful giant, thus rendering Compaq with almost no clients to serve. Soon enough, Compaq was virtually competing with its own products and had no other companies to worry about. This was a huge troubling situation for them. Intel this was the final nail in the coffin for Compaq. Although Compaq was producing cheaper alternatives than IBM, Intel's marketing made consumers aware that it was the CPU that was the most important thing in a computer and that the other parts did not matter if the CPU was not up to the performance mark. This might not have been true in the real world usage where a few of the computers using Intel CPU was not performing as Compaq's AMD CPUs but this was all about the first purchase and Compaq was in no position to lose that. When Intel got to know that AMD had a better performance, they started to build motherboards with all the chipset in it to aggravate the fact that if one needs anything, it is Intel. Not only that, the combination of a CPU with a motherboard proved to be cheaper and than most of Compaq's whole computer system. Compaq tried a lot to get back into the competition but strikes like the DEC merger and the dot-com era made it impossible for Compaq to continue. To summarize. Bad decisions were what slowly and steadily killed Compaq. Compaq on no level was making bad PCs or poor quality laptops. It was the competition whose strategic business decisions were much better received in the market and Compaq with its plain old merger and acquisition game could not just keep up with it. I hope you liked this video today, if you did then let me know down in the comments below why do you think Compaq is no more. Also do check out my other insightful videos here on the end screen. With that I shall take my leave and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you.